Guys, I remember the first time we saw that Red Death was actually going to make a return. It surprised us, considering we already have Crimson in the game, which is essentially Red Death back from D1, but in hand cannon form. However, now Bungie has brought to us the new reformed Red Death. Now, this exotic will be on your season pass. You can actually pick it up right there at rank one, start blasting away. Now, because Red Death is the seasonal exotic, this also means there's going to be a catalyst. We didn't get to play with the catalyst or even find out what it does. So this is just Red Death in its base form. It is yet to be perfected. With that being said, though, there's a lot to talk about with this 340 round per minute solar pulse rifle, which, by the way, is unusual in itself. As myself included, I expected Red Death to be a kinetic weapon. But you'll understand here shortly why it is a solar, and it's actually perfect. Now, being the archetype that it's in, this puts it in line with things like No Time to Explain, Phylotetic Spiral, Messenger, Elsie's Rifle. The competition here is steep. But let me just say, Red Death is more than just an exotic built for PvP. It's perks as well as the massive PvE buffs that are hitting pulse rifles, makes Red Death formidable in both PvE and PvP. Now, I want to touch on those buffs before we get into the breakdown of Red Death, because I think context is really important here. Pulse rifles, though, are going to be pretty cracked inside of the final shape. All of them are getting a 20% baseline buff and a 15% buff against Red Bar enemies specifically. That puts them at a 38% damage increase against Red Bars. Now, exotic primaries are receiving a 10% nerf to Red Bars, but you're going to have 38% there to offset that. And having access been able to play with Red Death and other Pulse Rifles, they feel good, guys. I mean, this is the new sandbox. You're literally seeing it right here. It was nice. But let's start with Red Death's perks. We have Redemption as its primary one. It reads that Final Blows of this weapon cures you and increases reload speed. Reloading after Final Blows cures nearby allies. Now, this is very much the rebirth of Red Death's original exotic perk. But notice the key word cure. Then in its second perk, we have Inverse Relationship. This is totally new. And it states when you deal damage with this weapon, it gains increased handling, takes reduced flinch, and movement speed is increased for a short time. And when you're at reduced health, this weapon deals additional damage. Now, it's that last part of the perk that's very interesting, especially for my PvP guys. But I want to start by analyzing each of these within our PvE sandbox. Starting with Redemption. Every single kill will actually grant you cure times two. That's 120 HP, guys. There's a reason why we love things like Heliocentric with Heal Clip, Luna's Howl with Heal Clip, Incandescent. That cure times two is amazing. And there doesn't seem to be a cooldown at all here for Red Death. Now, if you're like an old returning player and maybe you've seen Heal Clip in the past, I just want you to know it is a S tier perk. It is substantially better than its original iteration. And Red Death here is taking full advantage of that 120 HP top off. The difference here is that those weapons with hill clip require a kill and then a reload. Red Death gives it to us on every kill instantaneously, which allows us to rely on this heal even more than what we can with hill clip. I think the best association for what Red Death can pull off, it's like having Devour built into the gun. Then after the self cure on kills, we also get increased reload speed and the ability to heal teammates when reloading after those kills. Now that increase in reload speed is clearly by a lot, as you can see here with the reload side by side. And I would say this is roughly twice as fast. Now, keep in mind, we don't need the reload to grant ourselves cure, but for our teammates and supporting them and giving them cure, we do need a reload. Now, the thing I did not get the test is whether or not we apply cure times one or cure times two to our teammates. I would say this is probably like Hill Clip, though, where you grant cure times one to your teammates. But if it happens to be cure times two, then Red Death is literally in a league of its own. Now, let's look at the perk inverse relationship. This is the second exotic perk. While dealing damage. This gives us bonus to handling, flinch resistance, and mobility, which are all very, very nice, especially in PvP. But the one we really want to dial in on is on the increased damage when we're at reduced health. From our testing, Inverse Relationship has three tiers of increased damage, and each tier is hit at different portions of your health bar. And it acts similarly to the old Mechanair's Trick Sleeves. What I mean by this is that the damage buff will change fluidly as your health increases or decreases. Now, here's the thing. There's no buff time or anything like that. All that matters is what your health is when you fire off a bullet. So looking at the actual numbers here in Grass of Avarice, we're going to focus on one specific instance of damage, and that's how much we deal to a red bar with a body shot. At base, Red Death hits for 2,503 damage. This is at full health with no buffs. Then as soon as we're below full health at like 95% HP, we're instantly granted a 10% damage buff. This cranks up our damage numbers to 2,753 damage per shot. Then the next tier of 
of increased damage seems to be between 50 and 95 percent of our hp bar and this cranks up our damage to 3003 guys that's a 20 percent increase in damage but get this there is a final tier this looks to be somewhere around 50 percent of our health or less this has our damage increasing to 3504 damage per shot which is a 40 percent increase over our base damage now this appears where our damage caps out even when we were at like one hp we still had that 40 percent buff but guys 40 percent simply for taking some damage which let's be real whether it's gm content or raids or whatever that's pretty much where we live we live somewhere in that territory of 50 percent health but even the first couple of tiers those are very impactful 10 percent 20 percent these are all things that are going to go hand in hand with the big pulse rifle damage buff the moment you start taking fire and your health starts to get lower you are doing more and more damage now unfortunately red death kind of goes against itself as it's healing you in the process you almost don't want it to heal you right the only downside to this damage buff is that it doesn't linger again that's why we said it's like og trick slaves more ease of use to get the initial proc and with it having tears that definitely helps but the moment you top off your health that damage buff drops off so you can see why this has conflict with the cure that red death grants you right at the same time you can have 40 percent damage buff but if you're dead then that buff is kind of worthless now an interesting play style that arises from both the exotic perks being paired together is the ability to discard your fear of more lethal enemies essentially red death has a self-contained loop you begin a fight by killing some red bars you take some damage get some kills redemption will give you cure times two and will keep you in the fight while inverse relationship boosts your damage a little bit it. but then you keep this rolling moving from target to target until you hit an elite or a more dangerous enemy at this point you might be taking a lot more damage maybe you can't kill them as quickly and that's where both perks jump in to boost you massively if it gets down to the wire and you're less than 50 percent hp you're now going to be dealing 40 percent more damage this massive buff allows you to chunk that enemy's health bar then after you take it down you can rely on redemption to top off your health with that big 120 hp bump and something that i think is great about red death is how this weapon will simply become better as you enter high level content i would say like even at level content red death is not going to be that good because you're not going to be at those health thresholds to take advantage of that damage buff this is truly a weapon that becomes more powerful the harder the content that red death tackles now the last pve thing i want us to touch on is how red death thanks to its new solar verbs will be able to fit and synergize with our solar and our prismatic fragments now we've discussed solar synergy a lot as one of the main draws for hill clip on legendary weapons what we're talking about is things like of benevolence this fragment gives us all of our abilities 400 increased regeneration whenever we give allies radiant restoration or cure red death will do exactly what heal clip does therefore proccing this fragment when we cure our allies by reloading after a kill now what i think is even better than this though is when we look at one specific fragment within our prismatic subclass this is facet of hope and it reads while you have an element above your class ability regenerates more quickly and we can see it right here that cure is one of those buffs now i couldn't tell you what percent regeneration this is we're gonna have to do more testing on this but the sheer uptime of cure on ourselves from red death should mean that this fragment is going to pretty much remain permanently procced the big question i still have is what does the catalyst do i wish i could have seen it guys i'm hoping it's going to add even more subclass synergy but as we've seen from previous seasonal weapons the catalyst really does change the game on these exotics now let's talk pvp to really get an appreciation for red death and pvp we need to start with its stats red death actually sits at pretty high range of 85 and therefore shouldn't experience any damage fall off until 38 meters but stat wise nothing else is really that crazy like if i was just to compare this to no time to explain it is a bit worse across the board i think the main thing is that inverse relationship is going to really pick up this exotic as that perk literally procs from you dealing damage you get that increase in handling you take that reduced flinch your movement speed is increased these are all benefits that are netted to you simply for dealing damage so sure the stats might be lower than our current meta options but the perk should make up for that now outside of stats i want us to take a look at the increased damage as well as its current base time to kill value and then just my overall thoughts of red death and pvp just like in pve there are going to be tiers to the damage increase at base red death deals 41 damage per crit and 23 damage per body this means that tier 10 resilience to tier 7 you can get the kill at six crits in 0.67 seconds then from tier 6 and below you have the ability to get the same ttk value but in five crits in one body now let's look at our damage increase as our health gets lower now unlike in pve there are only two times we saw our damage increase the first happens at that 50 to 95 percent threshold where our damage went from 41 damage per crit to 42 damage per crit the body shot damage still remaining around 23 now this is 
like a 2.5% increase, but understand guys, there's going to be some rounding and it's really hard for us to know how much this really moves the needle in terms of forgiveness. It's probably still going to be the same TTK values, but that second damage increase, this happens when we're below 50%. And this ups our damage to 43 per crit and 24 per body, which is pretty significant. Now that's not to say we're not getting that increase in damage when we get the smallest of tickles between 100% health and 95%. It's very likely it does happen. It's just inside a PVP, you can't tell visually. And that's just going to require us to test things out to see what those percentage buffs are here in PVP. But top to bottom, it looks to be a 5% buff when you're below 50% HP, which is going to have us run with some theoreticals right now. Understand, I didn't get to sit here and line them on somebody and blast them over and over. Instead, we're having to go off of the visual numbers that we see here. So not entirely accurate, but something we can work with until we get into the final shape to fully test things out. Looking at that 2.5% increase though in our damage when we're between 50 and 95% HP, this moves our forgiveness for red death to five crits, one body, but all resilience levels. Then our max damage increase at 5%. This is where things get interesting. Even though we're less than half our health, our forgiveness changes at tier five resilience through tier one to four crits, two body at 0.67 seconds. Now, theoretically, you can get the kill in 0.6 seconds and five crits on tier resilience guardians, but come on, who in the hell is rocking tier zero resilience? But the point is, guys, is that the forgiveness and the lethality is there. Everything from dealing damage to taking damage, Red Death is a weapon that can turn on you mid-duel. This is a gun that's gonna net you two burst kills. And I know I'm not landing that many of them. This is not the normal setup. I've got a number of other excuses why it's not happening. But for my time that I did get to play on a map that's definitely not a pulse rifle friendly map, I was extremely impressed with Red Death. The cure that you would get instantly for yourself, the solar synergy, the ability to give cure to your allies, the big damage buffs in both PvE and PvP, and the massive damage buff that's hitting pulse rifles, Red Death is beautifully positioned here to be a dominant force in the final shape. And again, this is just base Red Death. I cannot wait until we get the Exotic Catalyst. So guys, that is our review on Red Death. If you've missed any of our other reviews for the Final Shape Exotics, feel free to check them out, guys. We've got links down below. We're going to be jumping into Exotic Armors here very, very soon. So be looking out for those. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.